Hi everybody, this is Anne. I've seen many potters use silkscreen printing to decorate their pottery. The advantage of creating and using silk screens is that they save a lot of time and they're durable enough to use them over and over. As someone who laboriously hand draws and then hand paints on my pottery, the idea of finding ways to save time got my attention. In this video, I'll show you the steps I followed to make a homemade silk screen, and then I'll show you the application process that worked best for me. Upon doing some research, I found some companies that sell kits that come with all the supplies you need to make the screens. This is the one I used. The first thing I did was sketch out several designs. I first used a pencil for this, but the instructions say that pencil and ink pen lines are too thin for the process, so I went over the pencil lines with a fine point sharpie marker. I also made sure the designs were blocky without shading. The big screens are 8.5 by 11 inches, so six of the designs fit nicely on a page. After I got my designs drawn out, I needed to print them on a transparency. The instructions gave specific printer settings to use for the darkest prints. As my printer ink cartridge was running low, I just took it to the staples nearest me. They printed it for a quarter. Also in the kit was a black bag containing the silk material coated with the light-sensitive emulsion. The instructions say not to take these out of the bag until you're ready to use them and only in low light. It may look bright in the video due to the camera setting, but we're working in very low light here. Included in the kit was a clear acrylic sheet and a felted board. I centered the transparency down on top of the clear acrylic sheet. I took one of the small test silk screens out of the black bag. I peeled off the clear sheet from the shiny emulsion side of the screen and placed the shiny side down over one of the designs that I wanted to test. I placed the felted board down over the screen with the felt side down. I then bound them all together with the included clips. I turned it over and checked to make sure the clips didn't obstruct the design in any way. It doesn't. I then placed a piece of chipboard over the screen to prevent excess light from affecting the light-sensitive emulsion. I took it outside and exposed the screen to the direct UV rays of the sun for one minute. This process will not work if the sun is covered by the clouds. It also will not work for your regular indoor light bulbs. When my timer went off, I quickly covered the screen with the chipboard to avoid overexposure. I took it back inside and removed the clips. At this point, I carefully touched the screen at the edges and placed it into a container of water, letting it soak for at least 15 minutes. It will not hurt the screen to soak longer than that, though. I was told I might see a ghost image of the print on the screen at this point. I think I do see it. After 15 minutes, I placed it on a plastic canvas sheet and ran the screen under the water faucet. The sun hardened the emulsion that was exposed to it. The uncovered design lines washed away. The emulsion is soft and can easily be damaged at this point, so I gently patted the water off the screen with a paper towel. I then put it back on the plastic canvas sheet under an indoor light source for 10 minutes so it would harden. After I figured out how it all worked, I took out the big 8.5 by 11 inch screen and burned all the designs onto that sheet.
To make it more workable, I cut that big sheet up into separate designs. I was afraid the edges of the silk may fray, so I protected them by placing tape over all the edges of each screen. Next I'm going to prepare the underglaze for the printing process. I'll be using a bit of the CMC gum powder and this Mako black underglaze. I poured a little underglaze into a small container. I tried this underglaze by itself but it was too thin and bled under the design. To thicken it up, I sprinkled a little CMC gum into the underglaze. CMC gum is an organic substance that when it gets wet, it balloons to lumpy gels. You need to really mix that well into the underglaze until it smooths out and becomes the consistency of pudding. Without waiting, I launched into the first experiment. I placed the screen onto my piece and began pushing the underglaze through the screen design using my fingers. When I took it off, I had just an okay design. There were still areas that didn't print. For my second attempt, I tried this time using a scraper that came with the kit. That was a little better, but I still had a couple of unprinted spots. What I finally realized was that the CMC gum needed a bit of time to fully interact with the underglaze and set up. I let it sit for about an hour and tried it one more time pushing it through the screen with my fingers. Oh, that did the trick much better. Here I tried several colors at once. Ooh, I really like that. I went ahead and used this screen several times on that piece. If you want to see the finished piece, stay till the end. Here's one of a hummingbird that I did in black then colored the bird and flowers with different colors and added other elements to the mug. I also experimented with sponging on the screen. I got a so-so result with that. One more thing, as these screens were sort of like stencils, I wanted to see if the atomizer would work. But alas, I couldn't quite get a clean print. Out of all of our experiments, it seems the finger smushing worked the best. I bisque fired these and glazed them to cone five for these lovely pieces. I really had fun learning this method and look forward to working them into my day-to-day -day creative process. I hope you gain some ideas about what to do and what not to do from my experiments. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.